as Muslims, we have a right to bring up our children in accordance with our beliefs, which have served us over the centuries well. Now, I give you the same right to bring up your children in what the way that you want. the rights of the want. children themselves? Well, the rights of the children come when, uh, when they are uh, as is, uh, they're old enough to understand the issues. Until they get to that age, it's the parents' responsibility and, and duty. Do you teach them you that Pakistan should that. be punished? You may not share that, but that is my religion. That is the way I've been brought up. And I, have, I bring that child into this world. I educate him. I give him everything. It's my right to make sure that I bring him. And I, I take issue with that. You think that it's weak. Well, that's your point of view. I know that's going to make him a better human being. And what's missing is when you talk about faith, you don't look at what faith teaches. First and foremost, what faith teaches is that, listen, you're a human being, so respect your fellow human beings. And I think that's an important point that you don't want to discuss. What is the penalty for apostasy? that is the thing that you fail to discuss, and that's why you've got those prejudicial views about faith. With what respect. is the penalty for apostasy? What do you teach the children will happen to them if they give up the Muslim faith? Well, let's bring Can the I, debate back into Britain. What is the penalty for apostasy? I'll tell you what we will do, because I, I, we could go down this road for a very long way, and it's obviously very important. Maryam Namazi was born in Iran before her family left in the wake of the Islamic um, revolution. Um, you are, or you are part of the British Council of ex-Muslims. Um, I presume that you believe religious principles are not entirely helpful to developing moral values. No, I, I actually think but uh, oftentimes religious principles are actually quite immoral, to be quite frank. And I think that uh, if you look at examples where um, uh, girls are, t uh, are, are sexualized at a very young age, for example, if you look at Islamic schools where they're forced to avail, where they're taught that they're different from boys, where they're not allowed to listen to music, where they're, not, where they're, where they're completely segregated, and, and many such examples like that. I think, uh, in fact, um, if there is any uh, good morality that comes out, of uh, even religious education, it's not because of religion, it's oftentimes despite religion and it's uh, the result of uh, an enlightenment and a vast social movement uh, for 21st century values that have had an effect on religion as let well. Me, let me bring in, I will come to you in a moment, let me bring in Mohammed Mukadam in response to that, 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 that uh, I don't want to mis, mis, misreport, but at Muslim schools the uh, women are put into, girls are put into a position uh, where they are diminished as human beings. Well, it's often uh, the case where people are ignorant of what goes on in faith schools and Muslim schools. The fact is, uh, our schools are run along legal lines. They te uh, treat both sexes equally, provide them the best opportunities. So it's often the case of people who have prejudices and ignorance. Maryam? I mean, I think it's typical of uh, Islamic schools and uh, the political Islamic movement to label any, any criticism a sort of prejudice and thereby racism thereby trying to uh, make people uh, silence, uh, silent on criticizing it. I think the issues are very clear. I mean, um, the, the head of the Islamia school, for example, was quoted in an interview saying that uh, there is, you, you're, you're born a Muslim, you're always a Muslim, you can't leave. And that's things that have been told to me untold times for having renounced religion and Islam. Uh, there is threats, there is intimidations. Uh, just yesterday, a 16-year-old girl was killed by her father for refusing to wear the veil. I think Islamic schools very much do suppress and restrict school? girls. Richard Dawkins, from your perspective, presumably you, won't, you wouldn't be entirely uh, opposed at all to the idea. I would be thoroughly in favour of education in the Bible as literature. Uh, you can't understand English literature without, without the Bible. You can't take your allusions. And that's an aspect of what the bishop was saying. He's absolutely right. This is a Christian country. Historically, it's a Christian country. You can't understand English history or English literature without uh, a knowledge of the Bible. Mm -hmm. And by the way, I think one should say that, that, that the act of collective worship, I don't approve of it, but nevertheless, the Christian religion, especially I think the Anglican religion, is benign by comparison. If a child at the end of its school career wants to give up religion, the church will quite happily say, okay, go your own way. The penalty for apostasy in the Christian religion is not death. There is no penalty for apostasy at all in the Christian religion. The Christian religion is comparatively benign and we should respect it as such. Richard Dawkins, does a God-shaped perspective or set of values uh, do any harm to the way in which children should be taught at schools right Thou now. shalt have no other god before me, thou shalt make no graven image, thou shalt keep the Sabbath holy. What on earth's that got to do with anything to do, to do with morals? That's the Ten Commandments, or at least three of them. Uh, it would be deeply depressing 
if the only way children could get moral values was from religion, either from scripture, and God knows we don't want them to get it from scripture, I mean, just look at scripture, or from uh, God being intimidated by, by, by God. Anybody who is good for only those two reasons is not really being good at all. Why not teach children things like the golden rule, do as you would be done by, how would you like it if other children did that to you, so, so why do you do it to them? So, so God is not only irrelevant, God is damaging. I didn't it. say God was damaging, but I think it, it's, it's depressing that anybody should suggest that you actually need God in order to, uh, to, be, to be moral. I would hope that our morals come from a better source than that, and that therefore they are genuinely moral, rather than based on outmoded scripture or based on fear. Um, Professor Lachman <laughs> said, um, if a child is born into a family given a certain religion, um, when that child, that child growing up basically knows more about, well, knows more about their religion and, when, and um, as they grow up they learn ad about other religions and choose and n they can... I, 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 are you saying that the fact that you're brought up within a religious faith doesn't prevent you being open-minded or adopting any religion or none? Not at all. It does not prevent me from... Um, Oh, uh, being open to other religions, I in fact have, uh, have come to this country and chose to put the veil on. I have come to this country without a, head, um, a veil on. So, 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 not, so not so very wicked is the view. But what is the penalty for apostasy? What is the penalty for leaving the Muslim faith? Um, to be honest, I cannot back that point up. Dr. Mukadam, what is the penalty for apostasy? Well, and, um, before, we keep well, coming down this give us a quick if, answer if, on if what is the penalty for apostasy. Let me come country, country. You Sorry? very well know, if it's an Islamic country, then the Sharia is very clear. Apostasy, apostasy is dealt with the death penalty. Thank you. That's all yeah, I well, want well, to But what's, that, what's, the, what's the relevance between what happens in an Islamic country and Great Britain? I fear to see the connection. Okay. I'm going to bring some more voice.